Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. This time we're going to be dabbling in optoelectronics and it's not very scientific so it definitely is dabbling so just bear that in mind before you um, criticise me for some of the stuff I'm doing. I had a look in my junk box and discovered I'd got a light dependent resistor and I wondered, well, I know they're a slow device in, when it comes to response to light, but I wondered just how slow. So I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll play about with it and have a look. So I, dab I looked a bit further through my junk box and discovered I'd got what I think is a photodiode, and I've also got a phototransistor. So I thought, well, OK, um, let's compare them and see what we come up with. Uh, just, just for interest's sake. So that's what um, the video is about. So let's start by going and have a look at the three devices I've got and uh, I'll tell you as much as I know about them. Okay, I said I'd got uh, three components I was going to compare that I found in my junk box. The first is the classic light dependent resistor. Here's a close-up of the um, of the particular one that uh, that I've got. Um, not sure where it came from, just bear in mind some of the stuff in my electronics junk box I've had since uh, since I was a teenager um, which unfortunately is now rather a long time ago um, anyway it's your classic uh, LDR uh, I think it's probably a GL55 series photoresistor might have come with an Arduino or something I don't know but uh, I think it's a relatively modern device uh, unlike some of the other stuff um, now uh, having looked at the spectral response of uh, LDRs I discovered that um, one of the one of the characteristics is they've got a quite a strong preference for a particular wave band and in this case um, you can hopefully see there the wavelength is between well it's about 550 uh, nanometers and um, that corresponds to to yellow light between 560 and 590 um, so my plan is to use an, a yellow LED pointed directly at the resistor as you can see there um, it's uh, not very high tech but uh, I thought at least I'd give the um, photoresistor the best chance at having a good response and the plan is to use a very simple circuit we'll um, connect the photoresistor in series with a, uh, a resistor to um, just to limit the current uh, and then I'm just going to measure the voltage across the um, current limiting resistor I'm going to measure the voltage using an oscilloscope because obviously an oscilloscope is a, a voltmeter um, so that's uh, that's the intention right onto the second component I had in my junk box that looks something like this now I think it's a photodiode if you do recognize it I'm just be interested if you know what the, the number is um, I've tried to find something similar and uh, sort of failed but uh, yeah I believe it to be a photodiode uh, if I put it under my curve tracer it gives me a classic um, diode uh, curve but with quite a high um, forward bias uh, knee and you can see on the component tester it says it's a Zeno with 9.7 volts um, as it's uh, as it's Zener voltage. Uh, don't know whether it is a Zeno or not but it clearly is a diode anyway and in the opposite direction um, just get absolutely nothing at all so yeah um, it's certainly a diode of some description if you look closely at it here's the best image I've got and even closer still a bit of an enlargement uh, it does look a little bit like some of the classic um, uh, descriptions of photo diodes that I've uh, seen uh, as I've uh, trawled through the internet so hopefully that is what I've got but as I say I don't know what the number is um, now based on that um, uh, very uh, technical approach to this I'm going to forward bias it like so uh, with a, a load resistor again to prevent it um, uh, simply burning out and I'm going to measure the voltage across uh, that load resistor and in the case of the diode the resistor will be a great deal higher than the LDR um, just because uh, I need to get the, the noise down somewhat but the principle uh, is exactly the same uh, and finally the thing I've got which I do know something about is the TIL138 which is a, a photo transistor and it's a pair of devices it's a photo uh, sorry it's a infrared LED and a photo transistor now the component you see in there uh, if I show you the other side of it you can see it's got the diode marked on the left and the transistor marked on the right 
and the slot in between um, allows something to go in there to interrupt the, the beam of light from the diode to the transistor. Now that's because I recovered this device, two of them actually, from um, from an old video cassette recorder and they were being used to um, detect the travel of uh, the mechanism, I think it was the uh, uh, the tape loading mechanism or something and I recovered them and, and just kept them and they've, they've appeared in a previous video actually and I was using it to uh, as a tachometer to measure rotation speed of a disc uh, but here I'm going to use it a bit differently um, and the way the photo transistor works is that uh, the photons strike the uh, transistor and that causes uh, negative charge carriers to appear at the base and that's the equivalent of um, of switching on uh, the transistor if you like so it's uh, electric uh, sorry it's uh, optically uh, activated um, so here's the circuit that I'm going to use it's taken exactly from the the TIL138 uh, data sheet uh, I've got a current limiting resistor 200 ohms on the diode and the reason that's not connected to positive is I'm going to use the signal generator to produce um, uh, the the flashes and then uh, as you can see we've got the, the transistor with um, a positive supply to the collector and then uh, a 1k load resistor and we take the output uh, off the emitter so um, that's the plan so let's now uh, go to the bench and see what all that looks like in practice Okay, here's the arrangement then on the breadboard. I'm going to show you this first before I actually get on to uh, checking out how these devices perform. The LDR is there and it's got its yellow LED pointing directly at it. Uh, there's the voltage divider resistor. The supposed photodiode is there. Its uh, resistor is just hidden there by that white wire. And then I've got the uh, phototransistor arranged here as per the circuit diagram in the data sheet, that's the 200 ohm resistor, current limiting resistor uh, for the L built-in LED and then you can't see it but underneath there is the 1k load resistor which uh, is across the output. So yellow trace will be the LDR, blue trace will be the photodiode and green trace will be the phototransistor. Now they're optical devices um, obviously so I'm going to cover all that up with a box, which means that there won't be anything to see. So when I come back, we'll just look at the oscilloscope trace and we can see how it's performing. OK, so the last time uh, you saw the board, it was uh, the LEDs were flashing at 2 hertz. This was just to uh, um, make it very obvious that they were flashing. Obviously, once you get above 40 or 50 hertz, it starts getting difficult to actually see that the, the thing is flashing but uh, we're now at uh, 20 Hertz uh, and the LEDs are being driven from my signal signal generator with a, a square wave that's been offset so effectively it's uh, it's pulses and uh, can assure you it most definitely is um, a square wave um, here's a, a screen grab uh, of a square wave so uh, taken um, from the uh, from the machine during this setup so you can obviously see the LED, that's what the LEDs are being driven with. So as a reminder then, on the display trace you've got yellow, which is the uh, light dependent resistor. Blue is what I believe to be a photodiode and green is the infrared phototransistor and the, uh, that's all already encapsulated. Um, and uh, they're all... Um, as I said, I'm being driven by the same channel of the signal generator. So let's. Uh, so this is 20 hertz. So if we um, go up now fairly quickly to about that's 100 hertz, and I'm just going to adjust the time base so you can see the waveform a little better. And straight away, you can hopefully see there that pretty much no change at all from the from the green trace, the, the photo transistor and the blue is pretty similar too but you can already see now that the light dependent resistor is already um, it responds quite quickly when the light comes on but it um, it tails off uh, as you can see it takes a while to go back to zero but um, I'm nonetheless quite impressed because 
I wouldn't have thought it was capable even of 100 hertz. I thought they were much slower response than that. But yeah, I'm still doing that okay. So I'm going to step up now to that's 400 hertz. And again, we'll just adjust the time base a little. So you can see the wave shape and you're becoming increasingly more distorted now. Starting to get a little change in shape from the um, uh, what I believe to be a photodiode. But the transistor still pretty much looking like a square wave which uh, is quite impressive let's go up to 800 hertz and you can see a real degradation now in the uh, light dependent resistor but the other two are still producing reasonably good traces so i think the ldr actually gave or has given quite a good account of itself really we're at um, 800 uh, hertz and uh, yeah it's still managing to recognize the changes so that's one kilohertz and there's not a great deal of uh, difference there with the um, wave shape. I'm going to go up in one kilohertz steps now. So that's five kilohertz. And if we open up the uh, wrong button, sorry, if we open up the time base a bit, uh, you can now see the LDR simply doesn't have time to respond, and the uh, um, so the waveform has. Uh, reduced in amplitude quite considerably. The photodiode is still just about hacking it, um, but the photo transistor is, sister is by quite a long step. I'm still in front with a, a reasonably good uh, square wave there, so um don't suppose you can grumble too much at that. And just for completeness sake, let's go up to uh, 10 kilohertz. That's 10 kilohertz now. Um, frequency incidentally is displayed on the, the top right of the screen for your for your reference and you can see the photodiode struggling now but the, the transistor is still uh, not too bad at all so if I now go up in 10 kilohertz steps at 20 kilohertz we've actually started to lose um, uh, lock with the um, with the time because the, the synchro is actually on uh, on channel um, 2 so I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll change the source to, um, to channel 4 and hopefully uh, that will allow us to go a bit higher. Yep, yeah, there you go. So now we're at 30 kilohertz and uh, what we've got coming off the photo transistor is almost a triangle wave and the other two are, well the LED, LDR is longer long gone but the um, photodiode is not making terribly good account of itself anymore so I thought those were um, interesting findings uh, I'm gonna just uh, come back down now to um, that's one kilohertz we'll just sort the time base out so you can see it um, and I think realistically the LDR doesn't start producing what I'm going to call a, a meaningful square wave probably until about well go on then let's say there that's um, that's a hundred Hertz it's just about to uh, holding its own but if you're getting um, if you don't agree with me because there obviously is a tail off there then if we go down to um, that's 60 Hertz let's just have a look at that looks yeah that's uh, at about 60 hertz it's still um, still got that uh, slow tail off but um, it's not too bad so there you go interesting results I thought well there you have it um, three optoelectrical devices checked out um, compared side by side and I was actually um, I got some results that I wasn't really expecting I expected the certainly the photo resistor or light dependent resistor whatever you want to call it I would have expected that to have been actually uh, a lot less responsive than it was I was quite surprised it was producing a reasonable um, waveform even with 30 or 40 Hertz I would have thought it would have um, struggled perhaps above walking pace you know maybe 8 or 9 Hertz something like that so that was a pleasant surprise and um, hopefully I've learned something along the way and hopefully you have too thanks very much for watching um, Please like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.